What it do credit kings and queens in today's video we're going to talk about a small balance versus a zero balance which is the best to report to the credit agencies. <laughs> Let go. Welcome, welcome, welcome back if you've been here before. Welcome to if this is your first time here. My name is EJ and on this channel we talk about me and my journey because I want to get my credit score to 800 and on this channel, on this channel man, we giving you guys tips and tricks and things you can do to help you guys on the way and we talk about personal finances to include manifestation, you know, getting your speaking things into existence. Look at the door. Look at the door. Look at the door. <laughs> I'm supposed to be at work. Oh. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I, I, I can't help. I cannot back this up. <laughs> Storybox audio. To give you guys one minute tips on how to increase your credit score. You know, just think this is this is a personal finance channel. So, with that being said, I am not a financial advisor. Just get the end out of the way. You guys follow me on my journey, and I'm hoping you guys, if anybody's in my same situation, that's what I'm here for. So, today's video, man, <clears throat> this one's this was a touchy one a little bit because you hear it all the time. If you're in if you're in this niche or you've been looking for things like this, you understand that people always say pay your balance off in full. And yes, yes, you should always pay your balance off in full. But when you're rebuilding your credit, you don't want, I, <laughs> my credit score just dropped 20 points because of this. I let my balance report as a zero balance for the first time since I began rebuilding my credit. And my credit score just dropped 20 points because of this. So this is gonna be a really long video, um, but the thing that you wanna do <laughs> when rebuilding your credit, or you're trying to get your score higher, is yes, you want always want a zero balance if you can get it. You know, <laughs> if you keep your balance as low as possible. We always say the average is 30, but we don't want to be average. 30 is still gonna be, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna take a little bit of a hit for it. You wanna be 10% of a low, preferably 5%, two to 5% is the, you know, the optimal range. And if you're like me, you have a security credit card, that's like $5. <laughs> so you can go to the store and swipe some and don't pay it off. And you know, that'll be your balance. But the thing I want you guys to remember with this is there's you gotta learn the difference between your statement date and your due date. Those are those are the two most important dates when it comes to this. Because your statement date is the date that it closes and they report it within two days to the credit bureaus what your balance was on that day. So say for instance with me, my uh closing date is the fifth of every month. So on the fifth, I have to make sure my balance is within that two to five percent. Now, within the month, I also make multiple payments. I make a payment every week to keep my balance low. So, when you're doing this, you never really have a minimal balance when it's time to pay the due date because you've made a payment already for that month. So, you really have a virtually a zero balance due date. So with that being said, you don't have to worry about that. And plus I have myself set up on auto pay. So even if I do happen to miss it, I have it on auto pay plus then you know, plus extra if that if I need to. So my balance is always zero when it whenever well when it's a due date time, so I don't have a, a, a minimum balance due. So when you guys are doing this, make sure you guys before your statement date, pay it down to you know two to five percent. After your statement date, you can pay it back down to zero. So you have a zero balance, you can start over again. We recycle money over here. That's what we do, it's revolving line of credit. On the first, say for instance, your, your due date's on the first and your statement date's on the fifth, like mine. Um, on the first, I make my payment. Actually, I kind of use my card from the 27th or 28th up until the third, I don't use my card at all. But that's extreme, that's because I just how I am. But you can make your payment on the first. It takes approximately a uh, day to two for your payments to clear on your credit cards most of the time. So you pay it a little bit ahead of time. I say pay it on the 30th, you know, just to be safe. Pay it down to that two for five percent. And then on the fifth, it's gonna report to the credit agencies what your balance is on that day. After that, or day or two after that, you can make pay it all off completely, start over zero, and do this whole cycle over again. Spend as much as you want throughout the month, get that cash back, get that credit, you know what I'm saying? Get all that stuff, get all your cash back, your miles, all that. And then 
towards the end of the month, slow down on your spending. Make sure you pay your card off every week. Now listen, the way you, it's kind of hard because it takes a minute, so long for your your uh, transaction to post. Keep paying, spending, paying, spending, and by the time your due date comes, you will have a zero minimum due payment. Now, make sure you guys pay attention to your statement dates and your due dates. Your statement date, you can find it on your statement, usually on the top hand side, next to all your information up there, or you can call them and ask them. My suggestion is make sure you make multiple payments on time, on time, on time. Make sure you guys are making those multiple payments. Two, don't use your card within five days of your due date. Three, pay your balance off in full two to, or a day or two after your statement date. That's it. I did a long explanation so you guys can understand it, but that's what I've been doing. My credit score has been jumping until I... <laughs> So I'm experimenting because I need to show you guys, I need to be able to tell you guys the things that can happen if you do this. Me paying my balance off to in full on zero, zero percent balance, I actually had a credit on my neighbor federal card of $4. I had a credit. So when it reported, I lost 20 points of my credit. You know how long it took me to get that 20 points? Like I lost 20 points, but your credit score is going to fluctuate. That's just how this, this game goes. But. I did an experiment just to share, just to you know, saying see what happens, and uh, it, well, it didn't go good. But now you guys can see that pan you hear people say it all the time: pay off in full. Yes, pay off in full after your statement date. That's the bottom line. Hope you guys got something from this, man. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, put them down in the comment section. Um, this is what I've been doing. Like I said, this is me. You guys following me? All right. This is what I've done to get my credit score up, and I'm not done yet. I got a lot more stuff to do. I got to remove my inquiries. I got to remove my derogatories. I got to do all these letters and send them out for certified mail. Like I have this whole thing planned out already. So I'm gonna keep you guys in the loop on all this. But this is just something I'm doing. You might, you guys might have a different opinion on. It. You guys may do things differently. That's on you. If you have any questions, I'd like to know you guys, uh, like how you guys feel about this in the comment section. Um, yeah. But that's it, man. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay up. Get your school. My name's EJ. This is Miss Introduction Mini Production. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let me know what you guys think in the comment section, man. Until next time, man. I'm out.